So, Thomas replied, what was the question that was asked? Thoroughly accredited by, oh no, no, not God, a man thoroughly accredited by God to you. Yeah. The miracles and wonders and signs that God did through him are common knowledge. This Jesus, following the deliberate and well thought out plan of God, was betrayed by men who took the law into their own hands and continues. So Jesus... Yeah, but this isn't, when, this isn't when Jesus was healing people. Yeah. I'm just showing you. Right, you. Someone is saying... Yeah, no, I didn't see what he was saying, yeah. He was a man, he was a man accredited yeah. by God doing miracles and wonders. Yeah. So the wonders and miracles yeah. was God who's doing it through his might and power via Jesus Christ. So Jesus was doing all these miracles as a man of God. Yep. So if you now have someone who's saying that this is the case where you have an individual who is a man of God doing all these miracles, so the perception of that person who's saying this, who is Jesus? Yeah, but you were talking about when Jesus was healing people. Wait, wait, wait. This is after, this is after sorry, sorry. I was searching. This is after his ascension. I was searching and this came up. Okay, I could go and search. Okay. But once I've got this now, you have someone saying, yeah. this is a man approved by God doing yeah. miracles and wonders. That's right. So what was this man's perception who was writing this? That he is Jesus was who? He's just saying this. That, that he was, he's saying this yeah. Who's the author of Acts? You're trying to say that this guy doesn't but Luke. Luke. Is it Acts by Luke, right? Yeah, I believe so, yes. Oh, good, good. So Luke believes Jesus was a man. Yeah, Jesus was a man. Man, not yeah. God. No, no, he didn't say he's not God. What did he say? Man approved by God. Yeah, a man. Yeah, a man approved by God. Yeah, he, so he makes it. He makes a dis he makes a distinction. Yeah. There's man and there's God. He doesn't make a distinction. He does. He says a man approved by God. He does say that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sure so that. so he's making a distinction. So who's speaking in this in that bit? It's not. The, I don't know the author. Who, you tell me. It's your Bible. No, no. But there's somebody saying something. Yeah. No, in this in this text of yours, your Bible, well, you not mine. You showed it to me. Here are Israelites. Who's who, who's who's speaking? Yeah. Who was it saying that? In Acts two twenty two, right? Yeah. Who I'm is sure it was, you know he's one of his uh, So is it just so, before that just So let's go to Acts 2:21 Acts 2 right no, they, they they all believed he was a man yes No no someone who believed he was a man approved by God Yeah he was approved by God He he did everything that his father told him to do his father. He humbled himself to become a servant of his father. Yes. His father? Yes. What do you mean by father? God is his father the same as your father? No. But he says so. No. Do, do you not know he says you his know. father is your father is the same? Okay. Thank God. you. You talk about God, yeah? No. When Jesus says his father, yeah. he says his father is your father. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So there's nothing special about his father and your father. No, no, it's the same. Yeah, but it's talking about his father. I don't. I haven't got the same relationship as Jesus had with his father. He says to Mary Magdalene, "Don't touch me yet, but go and tell my brothers yep. that I'm ascending to my father and your father." Yeah, okay. Is he making a distinction here? Yeah, he's not. No, but he's not talking about my earthly father. <laughs> no, no, no. He's saying he's going to his father. I know. Yeah, like I know. what you said. Yep, yep. Is his father your father too? But well, he's saying that. Yes. Yes. So basically. But not my earthly father. No, 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 no. The father he's talking about is your father too. Yeah. So you are, if he is a son of God, you are the same son of God. Yeah. Okay? So no, no not the same. He's saying, I'm going to my father and your father. Where's the distinction? Well, because he's different. He's got a different when somebody oh. says, I'm going to my father and your father, yeah. is the father two different fathers or one father? No, there's only one father. Right, so he's making no distinction. But there's only one son also. The father we're talking about. Yeah, but this, if the father is the same, uh, if the father is the same, and he's saying, my father, means yeah, you are a son, you are a daughter as a, as a woman. But he said that the father and I are one. One what? A one. One what? He says the father and I are one. No, one what? Which means one what? Okay, let me try to uh, understand why, why, why uh, this is problematic. I'm not one with the no, father. No, I and my brother are one. No, you're not. What? I am. Yeah. Did you ask one what? 
Exactly. Precisely. One, what? One umma. One what? Umma. Do you agree now? We need to know one what? Sure, whatever, yeah. Right. So when Father... But Jesus does identify himself as God many times. We, we'll have a look. We'll have a look. He does. No, we can have a look. You can, you can share with me. I know he doesn't, but you can, you can correct me. You can correct me. So when he says, we are, I and the Father are one, it's reasonable to ask one what? No, that is reasonable, yes. Yeah. So what is one what, if I may ask you now? Well, where, where's the context? Should we look at it? And say the context? Yeah. Well, okay. I'll, <laughs> shall I give you the context? He says a little bit later, just as I and the Father and are one, me and the Father are one, yep. you, all the disciples, will be one with us. Yeah, sure. Okay. But does he say, um, well, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father? When we talk about oneness, yep. He says, just as I and the Father are one. Yeah. So that means at one point he said, I and the Father are one, right? Yeah, that, yeah. Do you agree? Within one union, yeah. We'll talk about what, what we'll, we'll talk about one that means, oneness means. Yeah. Later on, he says, just as I and the Father are one, yep. you will also be one with us. Yeah, because we because we're <laughs> one in, in Christ. What's your name? My name's Leo. Leo, I'm yeah, Mansur. Yeah. Leo, when he says you all the disciples will be one. In us, one God? No. Good. Well, if we share in the priesthood of Jesus. No. Either it's one God or not one God. There is one God. No. The oneness. The disciples, the Jesus and the Father. Yep. Either they're one God. No, they're not. No. Good. If they're not one God, then when he says just uh, I and the Father are one, so shall you be, that means the oneness between Father and, yes, and, and Jesus God, is yeah. not one God. Because he no, uses. Say that. No, that's not, you're just leaping to that. I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm telling you exactly what he says in context. No, you don't. No. Hear, hear the words. I'll, I'll bring the verses in, in a second. Okay, yeah, sure. He says, "Just as I am the Father are one." So okay. he's, he's making the link. Okay, sure, sure. Just like okay, I am the Father are one, union. he's making the same link. Imagine the way I am the Father are one. So you will be one with us. So one what? Exactly, not one God. So what is it then? One in purpose. Well, you tell me. One in purpose. One in purpose. Yes. So we. He is doing the purpose of God. Uh, the disciples will do the same purpose of God. Yeah. This is not all one in unity in divinity. One in purpose. So either it means one in purpose or it means one in God. If you say one in purpose. He doesn't have to say it. He doesn't, no, he doesn't say it. Okay, you tell me it what he wants. It could mean some other, something else. Like what? Um, one in family. One in family? Yeah. So how many... Um, so disciples will be one in family in God? Well, like, the, like an Uma. No, would they be one in... Like in, a tribe. As, would they be God? No. Good. That's what I'm trying to elu elucidate no, from you. So it is not in any way linked with being one in God. Okay, well, I mean... You can't have it both ways. Okay, fine, all right. Because he all makes... Right, okay. Fine. So he makes that comparison. So Jesus is identified in Acts that we were reading. As a man, yeah. So who is speaking here? Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Then he says this. And then he continues and fell his right. So Good. just a cursory yeah. glance of reading, right. I think it's Peter You're speaking. Peter saying, yeah. Okay, I may be wrong. Yeah. Once you go deep down into it. No, no, okay. So so Peter knew Jesus very well. Yep. And he's saying, make a distinction between man and God. Yep. So Peter's perception no, is he's saying he's a man approved by God. Well, no, a man. Yeah, man approved by God, yeah, yeah. And it working through him, yeah. Yeah, so he's a man. No, he's a man. Man yeah. of God. That's right. Right. So Peter doesn't say he's yeah. God. No, he's he a does. man he of says, God. He does, because in the gospel, mm -hmm. he says, my Lord, my God. Mm -hmm. He does. This is, this, this is an exclamation to yeah. an un a question that he's answering. Every Bible says, then he answered. Yeah? yeah. What was the question he's answering? I can't remember, actually. There is no question in there. Wasn't it when it, uh, he was walking on the wall? No, no, no. I will, I will show you. My Lord. And he says, who do you say that I am? He asked him who he thinks and he is. It's a different thing, I think. Yeah, and my thing. and my God. It is a different thing. Yeah. Right. So, so when we go back to Thomas. Yeah. No, not Thomas. Peter. No, no. This is about my Lord and my God. 
Thomas said to him. Yeah, 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 but I think doesn't Peter, Peter also say, say John, that? John. He says, who do you say that I am? No, let's do one, one thing at a time. All right. So okay. in John, let's get the full context. John 20, right? Was it in John 20? Which verse was it? I don't know. Uh, okay, here. Let me go back one second. 28. 20, 28. Go to chapter John 20, 28. So, Thomas replied, what was the question that was asked? I want to know the question. I'm looking, I'm looking now. Yeah, John 20, 28 is the verse where he says, my Lord and my God. He says, reach hither thy fingers and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless but believing. And Thomas answered him and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Yeah. What was the question he's answering? He's saying, put your hands into my No, no, wounds. that's not a question. That is not a question. It's an instruction. What was the question? You won't find it in any Bible. The question okay, is somehow is question? the question is somehow missing. Okay. So the reply, which we don't know, so you can't use this, this is an exclamation. Okay? In the same it says that in, 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 the, in the Bible... So, it, so you, you, you believe in the resurrection? Yeah. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, because the question is missing, it's difficult to understand what the reply is to. So, according to the Bible... Oh, well, I guess what it would be, it would be... Um, according to... No, we can't assume. We can't assume. No, no, no. It says, it says before, that, because Thomas says, I won't believe that he is resurrected. Yeah, yeah. But when he so, replies with something, we need to really see so the, the question. The question is whether Jesus was resurrected no, or not. No, no, no. They don't, we can't assume the question. The question is not there. No, okay. According to the Bible, Leo, yep. what, how many lords and how many gods do you have? According to the scripture. Because here, Thomas is making statement, my lord and right. my god. Yep. But according to yeah, okay, that's fine. scripture, how many lords so and how many gods do you got? Do you think it's just an exclamation? It's just an exclamation. Yeah, I can say, for example, no, I don't get it. I if, if I were to like, imagine you are Jesus and I'm Thomas, and I say, my lord and my god. Yeah, yeah, okay. You see? This yeah. kind of context is missing. Because you resurrected it. This kind of context is missing. So I'm not saying you are God. No, I know you're not. Yeah, yeah. So, so in, 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 that, in that explanation, when I look at you, my Lord, because my Lord doesn't mean you're actually God. Yeah, it's like my Rabbuni, my master, um, like the disciples called Jesus. And he's looking at the sky and says, and my God. Okay, okay so he doesn't say that. But he doesn't, that's why I'm saying no, you, the context. You can, you can see it that the way. context isn't there. You could see it right. That way. So I'll show you. Um, we have. But it's, um, and he says, um, because you've, Thomas, because you've uh, seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are that have not seen and yet believed. That's what he's saying. So talking about. I'll show you a interesting verse. Yeah, on. And one Lord. One Corinthians eight six. Yep. Yet for us, there is but one God, the Father. That's right. And one Lord. Yep. One God and one Lord. Yep. And they are distinctly different. Well, Lord is God. No, 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 no. Here, Lord is God. for yep. there is one That's God. True. Who is that one God? The Father. Yep. Is he talking about the Son and the Holy Spirit together? Yeah. And no, no, no. Lord Jesus Christ. Before you go into the next part of the verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever the writer is in Corinthians, do you yeah. believe it's, 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 it's Paul? It could be Paul, yeah. Okay. He's saying, for us there is but one God who is the Father, yeah. from whom all things came, and for whom we live. And then he continues, yeah. and there is but one Lord. Yep. Yeah. Who is that one Lord? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ through, through whom all things came, and through whom we live. So he's the creator. So, wait, wait, wait. Leo, according to the author of this text, yeah. 
is saying that Jesus Christ is the creator. There is a distinction between God and Lord. Well, Lord normally would be like... No, no, no. The, the in this text, in the, this, we, don't, we can't jump to another text. This oh, particular... Normally in the Bible, when it says Lord, it means Yahweh. Um, this particular text tells you very clearly okay. there is one God who is not the Christ, Jesus. Yeah, but it's saying here that Jesus is the creator. I'm not talking about the creator. No, no, but it's I'm talking is. about God. No, no, but Try to understand. God the creator. Please, please, please. please. No, no, I'm try to, before we go into that, All right, go on. let's try to understand the text. All right, yeah. There is one God yeah. who is not the Holy Spirit, who is not the Christ, the Messiah. One God identified here is the Father. Yep. If you go to John 17, 3, Jesus speaks there. This is eternal life that you should know. You refer to the Father, yep. the only true God. So we have yep. two individuals, Paul yep. and Jesus, identifying who God is. Yep. God is not Jesus here, God is the Father. But Jesus does identify himself. Please, 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 please. Right, Text. Why do you keep saying that? Text. Every time I speak, it's like, please, 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 please. Do you know why I say that? Why? Because you are going against the text. No, no, I'm not. I'm saying that Jesus, okay. this, this text doesn't say that Jesus is God. Excellent. But it, in does this text, it does identify him no, as the in creator. The, in this text. No, on, no, 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 no. It doesn't say that he's God. It says he's the Lord. Lord. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Which so, normally means. So God. how many Lord do you have? Well, the Lord God. No, how many Lords do you have in this text? Yeah, but this is, there's one Lord. One Lord. Who is that? Jesus Christ. There good, 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 good. So, no, no, but, you, but you is identifying him as the creator. I am focusing on the very yeah, no, usage no, of the text. Do you, do you deny that that, that that identifies him as the creator? I'm not talking about who's the creator. You're talking no, about something I'm different. Not, that's what I'm talking. I'm talking about the text which says what he is. But who is the creator? Please, this is a different question. Why do you say please all the time? Because you are not dealing with the text at hand. No, it says the one text. God and one Lord, yes. Okay. Remember, the earlier... I am dealing with it. Earlier, you quoted a text to me, Which my Lord and my God. Yeah, I, I, I was about Peter, I was thinking. And I, Thomas, and I am yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. I am saying to understand... No, you say that there was an exclamation, it's fine. No, no, I am saying to understand Lord and God and the difference between them, yeah. we need to go elsewhere to understand whether there is a distinction or not. Okay, yeah, sure. I gave you a text in which there's a distinction made between God and Lord. Okay, yeah. And here the text in is... In the Old Testament, when it says Lord... We, we can go to the Old Testament... Yeah. Later, it means we need to we need to stick to text at a time. This text tells yeah. us there is only one God, yeah, and that God, is, God, and that God is the Father. No, it's, yes, Jesus was one God, but it's saying and there and? is only one Lord, Jesus Christ. So we're not talking about Lord now. We're talking about God. We live. According to here, who is that one God? Yeah, but, well, it's saying that and one Lord Jesus Christ. No, no. Through whom According all to this text, and through whom we live, Leon. Well, I'm not talking about Lord. No, no, no. Yeah, but you, I'm talking about God. No, yeah, but who created all things? And I'm not talking about who created. My, I am. But I am I focusing am. on. We just talk about what you think, yeah? No, I am focusing on. What I think. You can, but let's deal with this so, text. This is according text. to the text. Okay. According to the can text. You, says, okay, can you tell me now? According to this text. Yes. Who is God? It says God, the Father is God. Thank you. Does it no, say? I want to acknowledge that. No. Does it say the Son is God? It doesn't. It says the one Lord Jesus Christ. Who does it say? Does it say Jesus Christ is God here? It says that He's the Creator. No. Does it say? No. The question. No, it says the, okay. through whom all things came and through whom. Am I? Am I asking you who's the Lord? No, no. But I'm asking. It's saying you. I said it says He's the Creator, and you said no. I am saying no you meaning. Said you don't think this means. Not about Creator. Sorry, misunderstood. I am saying. Don't say no means don't say what I'm not asking you to say. I ask well, you. I just have to do what you ask me to say. Do. If I ask you a question, what's your name? You say I live in Brighton. No, I, I asked you what your name is. If I ask you what's your name and you say I live in Brighton, is that the answer to my question? No, but, but what I'm doing is trying to have a conversation with you. But I am saying to you, I am focusing yes, on God the Father. Yes. Fine. So you agree? Of course. The God is. Oh, I agreed with that before. God is Father only. And then, but, but, Do you agree God is Father only? No. So you don't agree with that? No, because it, does, it, it says there's one God, the Father, and one Lord, Jesus Christ. Right. So do you agree one God is only the Father? It says that. So do you agree with that? Well, yes, because there is only one God. And that is Father only? No. So you don't agree with that text? 
because it says he, that Jesus Christ is the creator. I'm talking about God, not about Lord. There's a distinction made here. Okay, so is the Lord the creator? The Lord, through him all things came, right? Yes. Through whom? So according yep. to that particular instance, yep. Jesus, through him, all things were made. Yeah, so he was the creator. Yeah, if you want to say that, according to that text. Okay, so the Lord is the creator and the Father is God. Yeah. Is that what you, is there a distinction do you between that? No, I don't have to believe in what this says. Do you believe that is question? It says that the, the, the God do you is believe God in it? and that the, that the Lord is the creator. Right. So you, you so now you're saying God can in this one text it says that. God can somehow give the creative actions to someone else. No, he is God. Who's God? Jesus Christ. The creator is God. Jesus Christ created. Who who's God here identified? This is the same father, but it says like it says a number of things in the Bible. It's not just Where does there ever a, where does ever one, where does ever Jesus identify himself to be God? He does. Where? He says uh, um You should find lots of to the Sanhedrin. So you should find lots of verses, right, in there? In the Sanhedrin he says. Okay, it. where where does it say? I mean, that? He doesn't identify himself as God immediately because he doesn't want to be killed immediately. Uh, I, I don't get he you. He knows that he will be killed. Why? Because of blasphemy. Blasphemy? Why would that be a blasphemy? Because the, the, he, he knows that calling yourself God is no. a blasphemy. No. If God is God, are you saying he's afraid to say I'm God? He was afraid. Okay. It, would that be a blasphemy for God, who is God, to say I'm God? No. Good. But it, if but Jesus was God, did he say I'm God? Yes. Where? He says it to the Sanhedrin. Yeah, well, let's have a look. Where? He says, uh, you see the Son of Man coming on the earth. No, no. I want to know where he says I'm God. Well, he doesn't say it in those words. Which, well, he has to. And he says, I'm Alpha Omega in uh, Revelation. That doesn't mean God either. Where does he say I'm God? Allah, though, what is, no, why does he say I'm God? It doesn't say that. You know it. Right. Doesn't. Why doesn't he say he's God if he's God? Because he proves it. <laughs> if God comes on the... Okay, imagine now. Imagine. Well, say imagine. I said I'm uh. the best footballer ever. Right? Mm -hmm. I could say that. You can say that. Yeah, but if I actually proved it... Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need to prove it. Yes, you do. Okay. Before God created yes, the creation, do. was he the creator? He created it at that point. Was God God before he created anything? Yes. Okay. Does he need to prove to anyone? No. Exactly. So he doesn't need to prove that he's God no, he to anyone. Did. He doesn't need to. No, he doesn't need to. Exactly. That's the point. He could have, he could have just made everybody. So, so, no. so Leo, so Leo. But he loves us enough to give us. Jesus Christ, if he was God, yep. you would expect to say to the people that I'm God. He did. And where did he say that? He doesn't say exactly, I am God, worship me. He doesn't say that. I'm not asking. Does he identify himself to be God to the people? And people said, yep. Yeah, he does. Uh, where? At the, to the Sanhedrin. What does he say to the Sanhedrin? They be, he says, you see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, um, the right hand of the Father. How many sons of God does God have? What? How many sons of God the does son God of have? Man. The Son of Man. You should the Son of, okay, Son of Man. Yeah, the Son of Man. Is the Son of Man God? Yes. No. Yes, he is. What does the word man mean? Well, it's his title for God. It's no. title for the Messiah. God, God, you see, God. this is where I find when something is plainly explained to you what it is. There's, there's no way that you can you, you have to accept. Leo, Leo, Leo. Okay, go on. If I said this is a tripod, yeah. you're saying no, this is God. I'm saying no, this is a tripod, yeah. you're saying no. Now, the title of God is a tripod. Makes no sense. No, 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 it does. When someone is identified as a son of man, son of man, yeah. A son of man is a son of man, not no, son no, of it's, God it's or a son of an animal. Of Daniel. Daniel can have all these visions, whatever, yeah. but it's con what, you mean, what I'm saying is he's totally misunderstood, misapplied, misrepresented. Well, if, if why would the, God? Okay. If you read why would God call be a man? Tell me. Pardon? Why would God call be a man or a son of man? Say that again. Why would God call be called a man or a son of man or a it's daughter title, of man? Title. Why would God be called a daughter of a woman? I don't know. It, it, it makes no sense. It, wasn't. it makes no sense. What? Oh, you, so you say? Would it make sense but to say you, God is a daughter of a woman? If you read the, the gospel, why does it say go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Why would it say what that? does it even mean? Baptize. You know, yeah, what, you know what that means. Was Jesus baptized? Yes. What did John baptize for? What? John was baptizing. John the Baptist yeah, was baptizing. Baptized, yeah. 
He was baptizing people for what? For their sins, yeah. remission of sins. Did he baptize Jesus? He might, yes, he did, yeah. What sin did Jesus have that he baptized him? He did. Makes no sense again. Well, again, have you read the passage? He says, I shouldn't be baptizing you, you should be baptizing me. But did he baptize anyway? And then the Father, then you have the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit in that one thing. Did he get baptized by John anyway? Yes. Right. John only baptizes for the sin. No, it was, it was to make the... This, That's the whole mission of John. It's called John the Baptist for a reason. He baptizes people from the remission of sin. That's right. So if he baptizes Jesus, what sin did Jesus have to be get baptized? Know. He didn't. So baptism is meaningless. Did it for, just to, to, um, because as a, um, just to show. It's meaningless. Baptism is an act to remove you because from, then God, absolve you from your sins. The, um, no, it doesn't absolve you from your sins. So what, what does baptism do? It's, um, it's a washing away. Washing the, away the sins. Yeah. So yeah, when well, Jesus is... repent though, you need to be able to... Okay, doesn't just so did it. Jesus repent? Magic. Did Jesus <laughs> repent? We didn't need to repent. Baptism works when someone repents. If you say and, so. And it, okay. How does baptism work well, with John? Baptize by infants as well, though. So they, when, they don't repent. Okay. So what happens to them? Their sins are washed away. What the, the, the uh, with baptism? Well, it's it's more of a um, I don't you know. Come on. What is the baptism for? If the baptism is for the remission of sins, as you say, not what I say, then Jesus must have some sins that was rem remitted. But he says, no, he didn't say that. Then it makes no sense to baptize him. It does. It's like, it's like, to, to Leo, it's like giving a genealogy to a man who has no genealogy. Would that make any sense? What do you mean, like in Matthew? I am saying giving a genealogy to a man who has no genealogy. You mean in Matthew? It's as absurd as this. If you say so. Okay, if someone doesn't have a genealogy... How can you think that if you read the Gospels, the gospels it, it, it states that Jesus is God? You can't, you can't where get away does it from say that. Jesus is God? You can't get away from You it. haven't shown us and shared okay. with me uh, any single not... instance where Jesus is God. Okay. It says, um, it says it a number of places. I'm sure people have shown it to you. You know, seen it? Never. He says, he says what? I'm the Alpha and Omega in... in um, what does Alpha mean? Alpha is a big no. Alpha doesn't mean it's beginning. A letter, it's, a letter. it's a letter. Does it have first, Does it have a divine connotation? The first and the last. Please. Does Alpha have a divine connotation? It doesn't. Does Omega have a divine connotation? No. Greek alphabets, the A, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, no, Epsilon, no, no. have no divine but significance. It also says the first and the last. Okay. First of what? The first of creation. First of all time. First of creation. Not, cre not creation. At the beginning. At the beginning. He is identified as the first of creation. Did you know that? No, no, no. Of course he, he is. He wasn't created. But he's he identified. Was he was begotten. No, he wasn't created. Leo, is Jesus Christ identified in the New Testament as first of creation? No. Okay, he's not. I don't believe so. No. Okay, maybe I, I can show you to if, I, if I'm able to. Okay. But I have a different um, path to explain to you about something. All right. Melchizedek. Yep, Melchizedek. Yep. Is he God? No. Okay. Does he have a beginning? Um, yeah. I think he does. Does he have an end? Yeah. No, he doesn't. Think so. Without a beginning of days, without an end of days. That's Melchizedek. No father, no mother, no genealogy. Yeah, but he's still alive now, is he? Oh, please, please, please. Where is he now? Please. Without beginning of days, without end of days. What does it mean, end of days? It's the last day. End of days means we have never end. It'll always be it'll everlasting. Will be the last day. No, end of days means if do you want to open up Hebrew seven. Hebrew seven. Hebrew seven. Verses three. Verse three. But Hebrew seven. Let's read Hebrew seven. Yep. Yeah. Carry on reading. Okay. Let... Verse three. Without father. Yep. Without mother. Without descent. descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God. What does it say here? I can't even read. Abide of a priest, Abide continuous. priest continuous. Right. So let's understand his description. Without beginning of days, without end of days. Without a father, without a mother. Without genealogy. Now, can there be... Anyone with that description, and they're not God. Isn't that a description of God? For this Melchizedek, King of Salem, priest of the Most High God, he met Abraham returning from his... He met Abraham too. So, so Melchizedek is described. 
He's a contemporary of Abraham. Abraham gave him one tenth. Yeah. Right. Without a beginning of days, without end of days, no father, no mother. This is more of a characteristics of being divine than even Jesus. Jesus had a mother. Jesus didn't have a mother. Oh, sorry, had a father. But had a mother. But this guy, this individual, doesn't even have a father and mother. Would you take him as God with that description? Well, I mean, he's he's more than Alpha and more than Omega because he has no beginning and it's no end. So the Bible often tells you about individuals describing in a much in a polytheistic sense, in, in a sense that doesn't befit them to have that description. This is same in the Old Testament. It talks about many gods. Yeah, that's why many scholars of the Jewish Bible, they will say there's a lot of polytheistic understanding and, and text within the Hebrew Bible. Yeah, it's, not, it's a strange figure, this milk, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. But no Christian, yeah. I'm not sure about you, no Christian takes him as God, as God because of that. No, that's true. So now we realize just being called Alpha, Omega, First, Last, yeah. doesn't make you God, okay? Oh. Because you have someone even more befitting okay, to yeah. be called God. So it doesn't make you God. So that's why there are certain essence of characteristics that we need to have and say, okay, these are misapplied. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus, if it, that, like Jesus is a, is a priest into the order of Moses. Yeah, what I'm saying, Leo, Jesus lacks one important thing well, for him to be God. They're kind of saying, maybe they're saying it's a bit like Enoch, where he was kind of taken up and all that sort of thing. Oh, yeah, some Elijah. genus Elijah, Enoch, and the Megatron, whatever it's called. Megatron, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there are lots of this kind of understanding from the Jewish that's been, you know, amalgamated in the Christian yeah. Bible. Jesus, the son of Mary, the Christ within the New Testament, you know, he lacks one essential thing to, to be God. And that is called self-sufficiency. Do you agree, Leo? God has to be self-sufficient. Uh, God is self-sufficient. Yeah. Good. Self-sufficient so, means... The thing is, though, he, he humbles himself. We're talking about any being to be worshipped as God. That being must be yeah. self-sufficient. Self-sufficient means being independent. Well, it's not independent of the Father, no. God, God, any being to be God. Yeah, yeah. Imagine a Hindu says, this tree is God. You should say... But there's a, the, they say that the Father, Son and Holy Spirit mm -hmm. are together. They, they're not, they're not, Christians say that they're yeah, together. They're together, yeah. So they're not self-sufficient of each other. Um, they, that's where the problem lies. I mean, you can say that the, 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 uh, the son is begotten of the father and the... And the, the son is dependent on his life on... Begotten of the father. Okay. Does the son have life? That's not, but this is eternally begotten. Does the son have life? From the beginning, yes. Yeah. And is his life inherently his or it was given to him? Well, it was... It is inherently his, yeah. Because he's eternally the begotten no. of the father. His life came from the father. No, it doesn't say that. Says he was eternally before he was be, before he was eternally begotten, if I can use this, then there was no before. Okay. This was, this was when, you say, when you say when you say eternal, means. okay, fine. Okay, let me rephrase it. Eternally begetting means eternally being begetting, right? Has it taken place or is it still be happening? Oh well, that's a weird question. Good. So if it's being begotten from someone other than him, no, no, but I don't think that it is eternally. Be it's, it's eternally, as in from the beginning. It doesn't, say, it doesn't say, it doesn't say, he was eternally begotten and that's it. Is that what so you're, you're saying? saying that he's, he's, he's constantly begotten. No, I'm asking you, what does it mean he eternally be begotten? Constant. Well, I mean, he is, he is eternally begotten. No, father, you have made this concept, eternally well, begotten. I, what does it mean? It's a good question. And a good answer is? That it's a mystery. Fine. So let's leave that for now. If he's begotten eternally, yep. not temporarily, he's being begotten, no, it was never temporarily because it was before time. No, I am saying this it, is before time. A temporarily. Before time. Before time. Yep. Good. So his being begotten yep. before time yep. is eternally dependent on the father begetting him. Yeah, but that's temporal. No, no, before so you're time. Talking about time. Before time. Before time, yep. he's eternally 
Yeah. A temporarily, dependent on the father begetting him. Yes. If the father didn't beget him eternally, he would not exist. Well, apart from the fact that he does. Do you agree? It is a mystery. Do you agree if the father did not beget him, he would not exist? Well, no. Exactly. Yeah. So his the life... Father, the father was eternally the father also. So his life is dependent but, on... But the father was also eternally the father. So in, without the son, he's not the father. Without the creation, was he the creator? No. Without the creation, he wasn't the creator. Yeah. So he became the creator later? He became the creator when he created, yes. So he acquired an attribute of being a creator? Uh, yeah, you could... Uh, 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 he, Yes, you could say something like that. No. God doesn't acquire any new attributes. How do you know that? Because he's eternal with no beginning. He doesn't... He doesn't... No, no. I'll tell you why. That's what you say, this, yeah. As Muslim, this is what Muslim will tell you. As Muslims, God is eternal with no beginning. That means whatever property, yeah. attributes, quality that he has... Well, but the father was eternally the father. To give so you... The father to, to, be the father to give you... Son. Okay, we well, don't understand that. To explain to you. So, he's, so the, the father the is also... Knowledge. The father is also dependent on the son for uh, being the father. Not. I will explain to you why this is, doesn't follow. I will explain to you in a second. Oh, but let's give you some other examples. Knowledge of God. Did God acquire the knowledge from someone else? No. So he had it inherently. What knowledge? Knowledge of anything and everything. Yeah. Right. So it wasn't acquired. He had it. No. But we, so it was eternally the father and eternally the son. No, no, knowledge. No, no, but, we, but yeah, sure, knowledge. Yeah. The knowledge of God, yeah. the love of God, the mercy of God. Let's take these three. So the love, so they could love because there's three of them. Did the love of God within God get acquired or God had it? So did, does Allah love himself? <laughs> You're not answering my so question. What? I am saying to understand God, God is not devoid of any attributes. He, Do you know what an attribute is? The, Do you know what an attribute God is? God was not the creator until he created. No. no, that's what I'm going to answer you. But you okay. That's what I'm God going to answer. Not the creator until he no, created. No, 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 I disagree and that's what I'm going to answer you. you. Disagree. And I'll tell you why I disagree. God, because he's eternal with no beginning, if he has knowledge, the question is, did he acquire the knowledge? Or he had this knowledge eternally without any beginning. What, what knowledge? Does he have knowledge? Yes. Good, that knowledge. Yeah, doesn't matter, I don't identify. Yeah, he, he, Whatever he, knowledge he, he has. He has the capability of creating. I'm not talking about creation now, knowledge. No. The knowledge that he has, yeah. did he get it from someone? No. Good. So he had the knowledge eternally, inherently. That's what we say, sure. inherent knowledge. Yeah. And is this inherent knowledge God? The knowledge itself is it God? Knowledge itself, is it God? Is it other than him? Is it God? We're talking about attributes and stuff like this. <laughs> the knowledge. Is the knowledge a separate God? No, it's not. Separate. Not. Good. So it is not a God, it is his attribute, a descriptor of who he is and what he has. Yep. Yep. Good. So far, so, so, like so far, good. Maybe. So, the life of God, did he acquire from anyone, from any anything, from anywhere? Or he had it? Inherently. Okay, yeah. Yeah, inherently. Yeah, sure. Right. So, we'll so, to... so we are saying some attributes are essential to God that he has them inherently. He possesses yeah. them inherently. Like being the father. Creating, act of creating, the ability to create, being yeah. called the creator. Yeah. If he didn't have the ability to create, would he be able to create? Exactly. So he was already a creator. He didn't need to no, prove. I understand what you're saying. So I he didn't need. Good, good. But, but the thing is, although he had the ability to create, mm. until he actually created, he, he wasn't a creator. No, he was the creator. We. You could say that. You could say no, that. He, no, no, I mean, we, Leo. He I was mean, a creator. Before, but before time, before the creation, was he God? Before the creation, he was the Father okay. and the Son. Was he God? Was he God? Yes. Do you know what God is? God no, is a being. No, God is a being that is worshipped. Did no, anyone worship true. him? That's not true. Okay, what is a god? Well, because, because, because people could worship anything. Yeah, that, make that, it that's, these are false gods. Yeah, false gods. Yeah, but still God, but they're false gods. Okay, fine. God is a being that everyone turns their attention, everyone, devotion. No, no. Technically, in principle, that's a being. A being that people are devoted to with all their, you know. Well, they don't do that either. No, they're supposed to. But yeah, by definition, that's what God is. Yeah. So before God created no, anyone. God, yep. Theos, yep. this is what we the generally understood definition of God is. God is not just someone who is a creator, that's one of his attributes. Yeah, yeah. But God is a being that is worshipped. Worshipped. But they, they could be false gods. 
but we're talking about God, to be worshipped. True God. Or... Was he God before he was worshipped? Yes, of course. That was your, this is your, your definition. <laughs> right. According to my definition, yeah. he can be God still being anyone there to worship him, still be can Although be God. Although the son worshipped the father and the father worshipped the son. And the... Oh, that's problematic. No, why, would, why would God need to worship anyone? Tell me. Because he loved himself. He loved, no, no. He loved do you know what, in the Trinity. Do you, you know what worship this is? is the, this, is, this is the thing. Well, do you worship something same as you or greater than you? Well, greater. Generally. Greater. Does the father worship someone greater than him? Yeah. Then he cannot be God. Yeah, because because no, God because is they, the most great, I mean, you say greater? the most conceivable being, who is the greatest conceivable being, that's God. There can be he's nothing greater than God. He, he, he is well pleased with his son. Do you agree? There can be no one and nothing greater than God. But he he, he loves and worships it's his about love. son. Do you agree to, with me, Leo? Yeah. There can be nothing greater than God. No, there's nothing greater than God. Right. So when God worships someone, as you said, he worships someone greater than him. But by definition, he cannot have anyone greater than him. But they, they love each other in some It's not about love. Yes, it it's is. about worshipping no, someone who is greater than you. No, no, no. They, he is well pleased with his son. So that means you and can worship son... someone less than you? No, no, I didn't say that. Someone equal to you? Yes, God can. Okay, do you, do you consider your wife is equal to you? I've got a wife. Okay, someone has a wife, can they worship her? Exactly. Just because they're equal to you doesn't mean they're worthy of worship. No, no, but God is different. The being, okay. Do you accept God, the being worthy, of, being worthy of worship who is self-sufficient or someone who is dependent? Who is worthy of worship? If I give you a picture of God, a concept of yeah. God, someone who is worthy of worship who is independent or someone who is no, dependent worthy of worship? Because God the Father mm -hmm. is dependent on the Son to be the Father. And God the Son is dependent on the on the Father to be the Son. Then none of them are God. And God the Holy Spirit is anyone, dependent on the Father. Anyone who is son. dependent in any way, shape or form in one time. How can you be a father without a son? Okay. How can you be a son without a father? So, there are people that can adopt someone and it's not their son, but they can easily call their father. Can they not? If yeah, that's their son. They can call him their son, yeah? It's son by adoption. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think God literally gave birth to Jesus? No. Of course not. So it's, it's not really a... No, a no. You what said kind that, of so that's not their son then. Okay. If they adopt okay. somebody, that's not their son. No, I am saying you can have someone adopted who has no relationship whatsoever, but you can call him your son. Yeah, so? So you can, you can be a son, a f father, without a real son. Just by calling someone my son. Well, he's not a real father. Then. If you say that's not a real son, then he's not a real father either. Good. Is, is God the father? A real father? Yes. In what way is a father to his son? Did he give him birth? No. So what happened? Fathers don't give birth. Okay. So the father gets the son from where? He's God. You are talking about sons? He's eternally God the father. You're talking about sons and father? Me. This is. Okay, good. A book which talks about God has children or son. Tell me, how does he have a son? He's God. It's a mystery. No, no. Don't play the mystery game. Why not? Mystery card is when you, you can't... You understand everything about Allah. I don't say I understand anything, but I understand sufficiently to say this cannot be God. What Father, Son, Holy Spirit cannot be God? What do you think? I think they are God. Okay. A God has to be self-sufficient. Why? They are self-sufficient. No, they're not. They are. You just said they're dependent because on each other. They are. Okay. Uh, he, um, they are. Tell me again. Are they dependent on each other yes, or the independent? The father is dependent on the son to be the father. Right. The son is if dependent any being, on the father to be the son. Leo, if any being is dependent on someone, is that being self-sufficient? Yes, because they're self-sufficient within the Trinity. No, no, no. A being within, that is... Within the Trinity, there's self-sufficiency. Individually, is the father self-sufficient? Sorry? Individually. No, no, no. Right. So we have a father, individually not self-sufficient. Just, we well, have a son. I mean, I, if I get to say, he's, he, he's not, he can't be the father without the son. That's your belief, no problem. So now we'll talk about self-sufficiency. If, if that's what you mean. No, I'm talking about a self-sufficiency. He would be a different creature without we, the son. You have a father who's individually not self-sufficient. Well, you have a son individually not self-sufficient. You have a Holy Spirit individually not self-sufficient. Well, the sum of... Because... Do you, do, do you know about sums of sets? Because the spirit proceeds from the father and the son. They're dependent, right? 
So yeah, in that case, he is. Good. So, so when you so have a sum of... Is, how many times do I have to say this? Mm -hmm. That the father is... The father depends on the son to be the father. If there's no I, son, I, there, I, I, there I can, is no father. I can see your belief. So you're telling me you believe in a father who's dependent on the son, the son who's dependent on the father, the Holy Spirit is dependent on the son or the father, or something yeah, along this sure. line, depending on Eastern Orthodox or not, sure, right? Whatever, yeah. Right. When you have a collection of dependent beings together, do they become independent or do they remain dependent? They're, they are, they are um, independent within themselves. No. When you have a sum of a collection it's of... Not, there's no collection. They are, they are one. They are one in essence. They are a collective. They are one in essence. They are collective. No, they're not. They're not communists. They're, they're, the father not, is not the son. They're not communists. Do you they, agree? They, Yes, the father is not the son. Yet. The father, along with the son, yep. along with the Holy Spirit, within this collective unity. They're not collective. Within this unity? Yeah, sure. Good. Sure. Within this unity, unity of dependent, dependent, dependent. Do you get an independent out of it? Yes. No, you don't. Yes, you do. No mathematics will ever tell you. Not that about mathematics. Common sense? No common sense or mathematics or philosophy or logic will tell you a sum of you dependent that, things becomes so independent. Do you think that God is bound by, look, by mathematics or something? Is that what you think? God has given us logic for what reason? So that we can um, live in the world. And so we can know whether who, who is the true God and who is not. No, no, no. When we reason, not for that? No, he gives revelation for that. How do we know a revelation is a but false well, revelation or a true revelation? Using what? Well, we can use logic. But they, they, if you don't use logic, how would you know? So how can you say that, that Jesus is not God when it said when it clearly? If, if, if a book if says read, if, if a book says Harry Potter is God, does that make it God? No. Good. So we need to use so our logic. You, but you, if you're so saying that we, the Gospels we, don't say that do Jesus you, is do God. Do you do you agree? Gospels don't say that. You haven't shown they me do, any example. They do. Where? The, the, if you read it, there's no way you can come to any other. I have question. read it. Have you? Yes. Where did it say that? Well, there's a number of verses. I've you haven't shown me a single verse so far. We have a discussion yeah. for more than an hour. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know. But can you show me one last time? Right. One example where Jesus says he's God. He says it to the Sanhedrin. They believe. He, he says, says what? That's, that's blessed blasphemy. He says, "You see the Son of Man coming in the clouds." A the Son of God. Man coming in the clouds yeah. proves he's God. Yeah. Of course not. And when, the, when he's worshipped, he doesn't stop them from doing it. When Satan is worshipped, does it make him God? No. Precisely. Just because... Why doesn't he say, stop, don't do that? Why are you worshipping? Because they weren't worshipping him. They were. They were showing respect. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Doesn't say okay, that. okay. worship. The word worship, proskunason in Greek, proskunio, proskunason, is like a dog licking the master's hand. When somebody does that, it's not worship. So when the brothers of Joseph fell down on their faces and worshipped him, were they really considering him, Joseph, to be the God? Of course not. No, God. So we need to understand they what... They didn't worship him, though. <laughs> Many they people... Did, they didn't worship him. They fell down in prostration. What were they yeah, doing? They, they were begging for food. No. When they fell down no. on their face, prostrating, yeah. is that worship? No. Good. So even prostrating someone doesn't mean it worship. It says worship. There are many other verses which says many other people were worshipped. Jesus Christ is a servant of God yes, he is. who himself worshipped God. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane, put his forehead on the ground, yeah, weeping and crying, Oh my father, let this cup be away, away from me and yeah. so on. Yeah, yeah. So we see the opposite. What yeah. he is worshipping, not he himself, the one who is worshipped. He says, Oh our father, yeah, no, who art in heaven, hallowed be. Our name or thy name? But they say that it's... Well, one second. Yeah. Let's understand what Jesus is teaching about who God is and who you should worship. Or well, our... You should worship Father, yeah. That's right. Does he say to worship him? He doesn't say, but they do it anyway. Ah, good. And he doesn't so according... stop them. Because they weren't worshipping him. They were. <laughs> no, no, that's what you think. That's, that's what, what you think. think. It's what the church thinks. No, no, that's what, that's what the Bible. church mistakenly thinks. No, no, no. Because the church, the church can only find examples where people are showing what we call respect? It's not respect. Well, it is respect, but it's, it's more than that. <laughs> it's not more than that. It is. Latrio is another word that is used exclusively for God, I think, in Greek. Right. But it's not applied for Jesus. Correct me if I'm mistaken. I mean, I, I remember this long time ago. What I'm saying, Jesus Christ, when he walked on this planet Earth, you and I will reject him as from, from being God, even if he said so. Do you know why? Why? Because God 
is self-sufficient and Jesus is not. You keep saying this, but you keep saying this. Do you not agree God is perfect? Yes, of course. Okay. But can Jesus, can Jesus, God have perfection without being self-sufficient? He is the God is, is triune God. Any God to have perfection, yeah. they need to be self-sufficient. So you're talking about Jesus as a man. I'm talking about Jesus as a divine being in yes. your belief. Well, Jesus is a divine being from the beginning, yeah. But That's what you believe. He humbled himself to be a Can a divine being be less than a divine being? If they humble themselves to. So can God the Father become someone who has no life anymore? What do you mean by that? That's what you're saying, humbling himself. God the Father saying, I have no access to my life anymore. Oh, so can, can God decide not to exist anymore? Can God, can God choose not to be God? I guess God, if being all powerful, if he wished to, to um, stop being, he probably could, yeah. So God the everlasting can choose to well, cease to exist. That's, that's, he just calls himself everlasting. Saying, the Bible says God is everlasting. Okay. So if a so God would describe as everlasting. No, if a God is everlasting. No, but if God said, if God decided, I, actually, this creation of mine, I don't like it. What fact, is, I don't even like, my, I'm not, I don't even want to exist anymore. So he can cease to exist if well, he wanted to. What, do, you, do you think he couldn't? You think it's impossible, yeah? Was he everlasting to begin with? Yeah. If I don't think he's going to do it. He's not going to well, do it. Leo, if he's everlasting to begin with, do you know what everlasting means? Yes, I do. But the, he will but never cease to exist. Say God wasn't everlasting. Say it not to be everlasting. Can the Bible be false and true at the same time? Um, it depends what you mean by that. You know the answer. It can't be. What you, what you the Bible cannot be true as well as false. It can be either. What you cannot mean, be both. What do you mean by that? I am saying, you have to understand that the, you cannot just say God can exist and not exist at the same time. No, no, you think it's impossible for God to do that? If, if God, I'm saying it doesn't befit if God to decides, have a concept of God in which God exists and not well, exists. So you say. No, so you what, believe... What I'm saying is, is if God... If God decided not to exist... Would God decide against his nature? No, he wouldn't. Exactly. What is, nature? what is his nature? Everlastingness. What is well, his nature? Sure. Being all knowledgeable. Yeah, but what is nature? Okay. Okay. Is God's nature being all knowledgeable? But why, why do you put these limitations on God? I'm not putting limitation. God has put his nature and that because of that nature, everything that contradicts this is what we reject. If God is everlasting, sure. we say God cannot be yeah. someone who ceases to exist. God is, if God is all knowledgeable, God is, God is someone who is not ignorant. No, that's right. So. Can God humble himself yes. and be ignorant when he's all knowledgeable? Yes. You know it doesn't make any sense. It does. God is all knowledgeable. It does because if God was going to, if God is going to um, be a judge, yeah, and so you come up to a judge and you say, and he says, you're a wicked person, you deserve to go to hell, yeah. right? And you say, but it's, that's all well for you to say, but you don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like to be fallible. You don't know what it's like to be um, a human being. I don't follow. Well, if you, if you say to God, right? So you say, look, it's so difficult being a human being. That I say, does God I, not know how difficult a human being is? He does. Does he but, need to be a human being to know that? No. Exa exactly. No, but, to, but, but, like, say, say um, God says, right, okay, I'm going to forgive you your sins. Right? Can he give the authority to this gentleman to forgive sins if he wanted to? No. Why not? Because he's not God. No, he just gives the authority. He could forgive. Say I did something no, no, no. to him. No, no, no. If God gives authority for him to forgive sins, would that make him God? No. Exactly. If, so if, I, if I, even if no, Jesus had the authority, it would not make him God. If I did something against him, right, and um, I sinned against him, and um, and I said, and I came back again, and I said, I'm so sorry, I've sinned against you. Mm. I, I repent of what I've done. And he says, okay, all right, forget about it. That's okay, I forgive you. Sure. He's allowed to do that because he's the victim, mm. right? Mm. And he's forgiven me for what I did to him. Okay. Okay? So if God says, God can forgive, right? But can God, if God wanted to give authority of course. to but him just to forgive to prove, all sins for every human being. How, just to prove how seriously God takes this. He how actually, seriously? How seriously God takes his judgment and forgiveness. Mm that he became the victim in order to have the moral authority to be able to forgive. God becomes the victim? Yes. To prove to who? 
to have to prove to so uh, God to the, to the ones who are God, being judged. He kills himself to appease himself. No, no. To, to, to the ones who are being judged. The ones who are being judged. The, are the, the, the whole sins. idea of atonement. If you say, well, you don't know what it's say, okay. okay, you know because let me, you have all let, this me let me try to understand something. But you don't. Re, you've you know, never experienced. It. You know the vicarious atonement theory because in Christianity. Because who is he I am, if you say, if appeasing? I, say, I am fallible. I'm a sinner. I, did, I, I sinned because I was too, too ignorant. And, but you are all knowledgeable. Okay. How can you how can you, you you judge me because you don't know what it's like to be fallible? Sorry. God humbled himself. No, no, no. Does God know? What it means, what human beings commit bad things. He knows this. Right. But so the reason why he became a human, the reason why he became a human is because of... So that he could become the victim. Why does he want to, why does he have to become a victim again? So that he has the moral authority to forgive sins. So he can't forgive sins without becoming a human? He can. So he, doesn't, he can do that. So he doesn't have to become a human? No, he doesn't have to, fine, but that's fine, what he fine, chose fine, to fine. do. So when he... He chose to do that. So he paid, okay. Christ, by sacrificing his life, he paid a price to who? He paid a price to God. He paid, God he paid, paid a all, price to himself? Yes. So God killed himself to appease himself? No, yeah, so when he, to become the righteous judge. <laughs> Let's understand something, Leo. God sacrificed himself to appease himself, to pay to himself. Yes. And it makes sense to you? Yeah, because... When, when he, to be a, to be a, like, like I say, he, he can't forgive, say I did something wrong to you, mm. right? And um, I came to him and said, oh, I'm so sorry about what I did to, to, to this man. What's your name? Mansour. Mansour. I'm so sorry to what I did to Mansour. And he goes, okay, I'll forgive you for what you did to Mansour. Okay. He can't forgive me for that, can he? Okay. I'd have to ask you for forgiveness. Okay. So what, what is the sin that Jesus Christ came to forgive? Who's sin? All of them. Who's sin? Our sin. Your sin. And how did he... Your sin. Okay. Did he pay the penalty? He paid the penalty. Okay. For everyone? Yes. Okay. So if someone doesn't accept him, yep. then they will be punished for their own sins. Yes. What is the punishment? The punishment is hell. Hell. For how long? A long time? Yeah. Good. Let's say a long time is one year. Or more? I have no idea. Probably longer, right? I couldn't tell you. Okay. Do you think it's longer or shorter? Probably longer than that. Probably longer. It depends what, I don't even know what time is in hell. Let's say someone is a very, very, very bad criminal. I'm not even sure what the time is in hell. I wouldn't know. Do you believe hell is eternal? Yeah. You, right. You so there is an eternal punishment where people will be punished forever. Did Christ take away that punishment on his shoulder, like for like? He did. Okay. So let's say for me, for example, if I were not to believe in Christ, not to believe in yep. God, I would be punished in hellfire for a long time. Yeah. Someone is going to substitute and say, I will take that punishment from, from you. I'll take it on my shoulder. So let's say I was supposed to be punished in hellfire for one year or one million years. Wait, 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 wait. One million years, say for example. Did Jesus take that punishment by suffering in one million years in hell? You know the answer, he didn't. Yeah. So he has not taken punishment for one individual, let alone he was, every other individual. He was, he, was, um, he was completely innocent. No. Has he taken the punishment for all the sinners of their punishment which they were going to face? No. So, so he hasn't saved anyone? What are you talking about? He's, he's saved everyone. Look, look. By taking their punishment on his shoulder, that's he saving them. But it looks like he hasn't taken the punishment of any human being because human beings, if they reject God, become a rebel. Uh -huh. They will be punished forever in hell. Yeah. Jesus Christ was there on the earth, inside the earth for three days and three nights. That's what the Bible says. Because J J Jesus Christ, if you reject him, he won't force you to accept him. If he were to take the punishment for someone who rejected God, but that said, punishment, no, 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 that no, no, punishment not, was it's eternal not, it's hellfire. Not he took the punishment. What did he take? He took away the sin. And the sin is what? He took it to the forgiveness of sins. <laughs> what was the sin? The sin of your sin. Rejecting sin. God, right? So no, if if some sins than that. 
Every sin. Every sin. Right. How did he take the sins? What happened to him by taking the sins? Is he holy? He is holy. Yeah. Can a holy God take sins? He, he, he took the punishment. Now you're saying punishment. Earlier on, okay. I said punishment. You're now saying sin. All right, sure. God. Yeah. She's so holy, according to Christian theology, yeah, yeah. he cannot take the sins, cannot come near to sin. So, who took the sins? God or man Jesus? He took the, he took the as God or man? Did he take the sins as a man or as God? As God, he cannot come near sin. As God, he cannot come near sins. That's why the whole Bible. You can read about it. I, I don't have time now, but the whole theology of Christianity is God is so holy, he cannot come near sin. That's why he came down as a man to take this. You can correct me later next time, next week. If I'm. What do you mean he can't come near? That's the biblical theology. God is so holy, the sin cannot come near him. So he cannot take in sin as a holy individual. Well, God wrestled with Jacob. God, was in the God bush. wasn't wrestling with Jacob. It was an angel that was wrestling no, with Jacob. And who won? Who won? Well, he allowed him to win. No, who won? Who won? God or Jacob? God won. No. Who won? Yeah, I'm asking no, you again. No, he, 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 who won? He God or Jacob? What do you mean who won? There wasn't. No, God was wrestling with Jacob. Yeah. Within the wrestling, he touched who him. He won? No, 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 no. Within this him. wrestling, who won? God or Jacob? He wrestled with him. Excuse me. Leon. According to the wrestling, yeah, God, him he him. God was wrestling. You said yeah. wrestling. Yeah. It's God. Not a case of who, he didn't, who won? He didn't overpower God. Who won? He didn't overpower God won Jacob. or Jacob won? Jacob was wrestling with him. Who won? Jacob or God? Well, it's not a case of who won. Yes, it is. Why? Who won? So you think in this wrestling, who won? We know who won. Jacob won. Yeah. And God blows. He lost. God didn't lose. God didn't win. He lost. No, no, he won. How did he win? Because he, because he got Jacob. How did he win? He won because Jacob became his patriarch. Became no, how did God win in this wrestling? Because that's did you have God's a, plan. Look, that's what, when, you, when you wrestle with someone, when you wrestle with someone, how do you win? You overcome them. Yeah, yeah, overpower them. Was, did God overpower it Jacob? It wasn't a competition. Did God overpower it Jacob? It wasn't a competition. What was it then? God, God crippled Jacob. Crippled Jacob. By, immediately by touching. God crippled him. So he won. So you think that God just like he obviously allowed it. Do to, you under, do you even see he this? Didn't overpower God. So do you even see this kind of understanding of God wrestling and so on and yeah, so on? Jacob it makes no sense. In our belief, yeah, God is the greatest. So no one can bush. no one can hurt God, God was in the or wrestle with God. God was in the burning bush. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. God wasn't in the burning bush. Okay. The earth. The universe cannot contain God, it will de de totally destroy itself. When Moses wanted to see God, what happened? What? When Moses the prophet, peace be upon him, yep. wanted to see God, what happened? What you mean on the, on the mount? What happened? When he wanted to see God, what did God say? Well, you can't say it. He saw his back parts, didn't he? So God has a back that, part. That's what it said. God has a back part? Yeah. I know it says that. Do you believe God has a back part? Yeah. And has a front part and a back part? Yeah. Jesus. Is God a spirit? God, okay. The Bible says God is a spirit, yeah, yeah. which has front part and a back part. So we are yeah. now believing in a God in Christianity, which is a spirit with a front part and a back part. Yeah. Does it make sense to you? Why not? Okay. So well, why? Got Allah's got like, uh, no, 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 no. two right hands in the No, no, no. Allah doesn't have two right hands. No, this is this is a weak hadith. We don't believe in that. Right. Yeah. We have established now God cannot be seen in His front. According to your scripture, well, um, why not? No, he can. Why not? He can be seen. No, he, God says he can't. No, you cannot Jesus see Christ me. Was God and he could see no, no. His front. To Moses, what did God say? What did God, you tell me? He says you cannot see me. But when I but pass he by, see, he did see was God telling saw, the truth? He saw his back part. God says you cannot see me okay. and live. All right, sure. No man can see God and live. Has anyone seen God and lived? Yes. So God can be seen. So whoever says no one can see God and live is a false statement. You could say that, yeah. What if you've God said I, that? It, well, because he's saying it in that form. <laughs> you, you, that can... you see, you see, look. In, the, in that form. You see, God says the, because, you, because the, 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 the heavens and the earth so cannot the glory, contain God. You can't see the glory of God. 
the heavens and, and the it, earth cannot contain God. No, Do you know that's that? That's true. Yeah? That's why, but when he humbled himself, this is what this is the whole point of humbling himself. But the question is, if it cannot contain God, how can God be less than what he is? Can you go, can you put God in a bottle and close the lid? And he can't come out of it? But if he wanted to do that, look. If he humble himself yeah. and he has ha no access, he could have easily. Could look, have easily okay. Done it let me let me ask you a simple didn't question. Have to do let me ask you a very simple question. Can God have? It's like he could have easily have overpowered Jacob. Can God have temporary amnesia for 15 minutes and he doesn't know who he is? No. Well, I mean, can he or can he not? Well. I mean, I don't know, maybe. So, there's a possibility in your belief that God can tem have temporary amnesia and he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know he's God. He doesn't know the world, his creation. He doesn't know the Son who, and the Holy Spirit as God. He has total amnesia. That should be something for your reflection. I think we have spoken yeah, enough. No, fair enough. Yep. And it's right. a pleasure speaking to you, yeah, speaking to you but too. please, please reflect. I'm a yeah, Muslim. No, I, yeah, yeah. We invite you to accept Islam who this belief is all about submitting the God who is worthy of worship, the God of Christ, yeah. the God of Jacob, Christ the God of Moses, uh, Christ, as we have described so far. Um, I, I, I humbly uh, disagree with you, with the reasons I've given you why he's not worthy of worship. Why not? I think we've already explained why not. He's not self-sufficient. A being who is worthy of worship must be self-sufficient. This is not self-sufficient. This is not self-sufficient. A book, not this Quran, a book. Yeah, yeah. A bag is not self-sufficient, not worthy of worship. Yeah. A rat, a cat, a mouse, a donkey, no, an elephant, that. not worthy of but worship. They're self-sufficient within the Trinity. They're not self-sufficient. They're they dependent are. on each other, as you said. Yeah, they are dependent on each other. Then they're not self-sufficient. Yeah, because they're one. Any, they're the, one. This is something that you can go and look up later, Leo. One in essence. Of when, when, you when, you, when you have a sum of dependent beings or persons or things, in, 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 in totality, they're, they're all, already dependent. The only way in which they're dependent is in relationship between... Doesn't them. matter whichever way, the moment you identify someone as dependent, you've automatically taken the self-sufficiency like away. When Jesus became man, he did the will of his Father. Do you read, the, do you read the Quran? He didn't do it have, you read he, the, have you read the Quran? I've read bits of it, yeah. There you go, this is for you, a, for a gift from us. Okay, a translation you. of the Quran. You can read about what the Quran describes about God, yep. about Christ, and his mother Mary, yep. and you will see the the Wait, story. Did say that um, his mother was the sister of Aaron? Okay. According to history, Mary, the mother of Christ, yep. described to me her brothers and sisters and their names. Right. Do you know? Do you know whether she had a brother or a sister? Well, Aaron. No, I'm asking you. Do you know? whether she had a brother or a sister. No. Right. So how can you say she didn't have a brother called Aaron? Hmm? All right. Exactly. The Quran gives you revelation yeah, but telling you... It's about the other Miriam. The other Miriam. No. The Quran tells you, and it never mixes up this typology or topology in which always you'll find the Quran does not anyway mix Moses and Jesus together in one time frame. Okay? No. All it does is tells you, okay, the similar names. You have similar names in the genealogy tree. It jumps around a lot, doesn't it? It doesn't jump around a lot. It does from one time to another. No, no, Quran is not a human work. The Quran is a divine, divine, establishable. It's establishable, meaning it can be established. A book from God will be free from contradictions, free from errors, free from discrepancies. A book from error should describe God in his perfection. A book from error should be something that you, a book from God would be with a whole mark that's from God. But then it is in error, though, isn't it? What error have you found in the Quran? Well, the sun doesn't set in a muddy pool. God doesn't say sun sets in a muddy pool. God says there's an individual called Vulkarnain, the oh, possessor of two horns, in his travels, oh, sure. and he saw Wajada Indaha Taghru. What he saw so the sun setting. Look, what, wait. Say that the, um, we are seeing the sun setting in the horizon. Doesn't it say that this uh, sperm comes from between the ribs? No, again, the, the Quran talks about how God created. God created human beings. Is that, is, that correct? is that correct or not? I'm answering. Sperm does I'm translating. So let man think 
from what he is created from. He's created from a gushing fluid, yeah. and he proceeds from, without the word, without the word, and proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. Right. Two um, proofs given here about man's creation. One about creation from a fluid, which is self-propelling, gushing. The word used in the Arabic language, I'll make it very what simple is, for you. Talking about? I'm explaining. In very simplest terms, in Arabic normally, something that does the job is called ism fa'il. Okay? The active participle or whatever, I don't know the English grammar terms, right? The subject. Like, I am the artist, I am the one doing it, right? Yep. Ism fa'il. So, the word is mimma in dafiq, meaning the, the word water, the gushing fluid, is itself propelling. Is what's, itself, what's it referring to? It's referring to the sexual fluid, for example, right. of the man. Right. In that instant, Coming which itself. No, 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 no. The That's sexual the fluid. This is a sec, This is something, something different. You're confusing. No. The next verse. No. The next ayah. No. The first ayah is talking about. Because it is something that's self-emitting, self-propelling. It has its own motion. Right. We know the sperms are like that. Right. Yeah. They are self-motile. Yeah, they They're self-motile. Yeah. Okay. We know this because of our modern science. 1400 years ago when the Quran was revealed, it wasn't something that was confirmed with them, right? So this is quite amazing. How does the Quran describe Ma'un Madfuq? It doesn't say Ma'un Madfuq, as we expect. It says Ma'un Dafiq, one thing. The second ayah says, Yakhruju min bayni sulbi wa taraib, proceeding. The word Yakhruju is applied in the Quran in various contexts, never referring to the the, the sperm or the sexual fluid and so on, but it's referring to man. How it talks about how God creates and how he resurrects back, you know, kathalika yukhrajun and so on. Quran mentions throughout contextually, right? The, I'm to, in context, this proceeding from refers to the human being. The human being during birth proceeds from in between the rib cage and the back. Have you ever seen a, a delivery? I have. When the baby is in the womb of the mother, the baby is already in this portion. Right? So the baby is in between these two portions, protected by something in the front. The rib. Yeah. So this is what the Quran is saying. Because the Quran is highlighting how God has protected human beings with so many things, have placing angels in there. Like, uh, if, the, if the mother comes first, then it will resemble her and if the, no, no. Yeah. This is the hadith of the Prophet the hadith, yeah, in hadith, which yeah. he described how if the mani is fa'ala and so on, it becomes dominant. We know that when it comes in, for example, in terms of, there's two ways looking at it, genetically and without genetically going into epigenetics and other things. When you have a chromosome X and Y, if the Y chromosome becomes dominant, then it will be male. Yeah? No, so when, when the sexual fluid is always X. Yeah. And then the sperm is either X or Y. Yeah. So when if you think about it, the woman can only produce X. something that is X. Yeah. So when it's not about who comes first. It's not about no, coming first is another one. This is something I, a recent study that's recent knowledge of ours in terms of when what determines the gender of the child. It's not just X and Y. There's a lot of things involved. A lot of things with it called epigenetics and many other things. The sexual fluids, the environments, the womb and so on. You know, many things, nutrients. It's not just simply X and Y. You didn't know that because you didn't yeah. study the, you only heard about what some people saying about these things, okay? Yeah, so the Quran, the statement of the Prophet is so accurate, so he even describes saying, the color. You're saying that if the, um, if the egg is impregnated by, if there's if a Y chromosome, um, if a, if a uh, sperm, they, have, they will make the Y chromosome. Spy con the sperm contains the Y chromosome. Well, no, it if it becomes it, dominant. It actually contains the uh, DNA. Uh, but... Yeah, yeah, DNA, so, so which has a chromosome DNA, of yeah, X and Y. Sure, sure. So when it, when, when it joins together with the female um, half of the DNA, yeah. and it, it will become Y. No, no, no. X, Y. The, 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 the male, the male can give y or x yeah. and you have x from yeah, yeah. x y becomes a male x x becomes in the womb 
No, what I'm saying I'm saying the sex of a child is not necessarily only determined by the X and Y chromosomes. But you're saying that if there's a lot more. When the sperm and the egg are joined, you're saying that, that that's not determined to whether it's male or female at that point. No, I'm saying even how they're joined, what makes them join together? Is the Y chromosome going to join? Well, no, it's the DNA that joins to, to, to become the DNA in the centre of the, in the new. Um, where, where is it joining? Sorry? Where is it joining? Well, there's half a DNA and there's another half DNA. Yeah. And they join together and then that becomes the new DNA. Yeah. X and Y were X and X, right? No, but the DNA, the chromosomes are something that comes... The chromo yeah, you're talking about the daughter offspring. But what I'm saying, the sex of the child, you can have... If I were to ask you now, are there people with XXY? Yeah, why, why there, X? There are, like that, yeah. there are lots of things, yeah, right? They so they can have a what we call phenotype, a physical manifestation, um, which may not necessarily. Like the conditions in the womb. I'm saying conditions in the womb. That can change the DNA. Conditions? No, no, DNA doesn't change. I'm saying the conditions <laughs> the on the womb the can affect and affect how the gender of the child is. Okay, you can look into I don't it. Know about that. Okay, you can look into it. This is what, as far as I understood, if I'm mistaken, I'm mistaken. But you can look into it. Okay. It's not as easy as people think, right? No, it's not as easy no, as people no. think. So the, the statement that the Prophet Islam does not go against our current knowledge of science. In fact, he even says, for well, example, said, like, with the, in the embryo embryology, yeah. where it's like a clot of blood and then the bones no, no, no. and then the flesh. This is totally congruent with modern embryology. No, that's when that's the Quran, not a clot of blood. the Quran doesn't say clot of blood. It says alaqa. Alaqa has several meanings. Right. It says first, you create it from nutfa, then alaqa, mudga, mudga, mukhallaqa, ghayr mukhallaqa, and then khalqan akhar, right? So you have a sp sperm, and then alaqa, which is a leech-like clinging object, and then which is like a, a, a mudga would be like a lump of flesh, and then and so on. The word clot of blood was a translation people use because when they thought like once a child is aborted, it looks like yeah, a clot of blood. Yeah. That's, but it doesn't mean in Arabic language. The Arabic language is the word alaqa. Alaqa has one root connected meaning, which is all about like clinging. And then from which comes various meanings. The reason why the blood is called alaqa or alaq or alaqa in Arabic language, because it clings when it's solid. It's called damun jamit, okay? A blood that is congealed, is something clings to it. That's why it's called an alaqa. Not because it's actually blood, it's because it's clinging. When we say we have alaqat, meaning we have relationship because we are attached to each other. When something is hanging, we call a mu'allaq because it's hanging. So the word alaq in the Arabic is something, in the suit word, is something that hangs and clings. The embryo in the womb's, womb of the mother yeah, yeah. is actually hanging and clinging yeah. quite a long time uh, yeah, yeah. until its born, baby is born. Yeah. So the word alaqa is applicable well, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, yeah. to the uh, wall of the womb. Yeah. And then when it talks about then how it transforms into different stages, this is what people Without, because of their lack of knowledge of science, and lack of knowledge of the Quran is saying, they're making all these mistakes. Mistakes in saying, oh, the Quran says the, the, fle uh, the bone comes first, or the flesh comes first, and so on and so forth, when not realizing, I know, brother, I know, oh, well, not realizing what the Quranic text is saying. Yeah. Just because some people debated and they, they didn't do well, it doesn't mean the Quran is what it is saying. It's what they underperform in their explanation. A lot of people are debating on this subject. It's not new. You've heard it. You've probably seen it on the internet, on YouTube. If they're about this issue, about embryology, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's so many responses around back and forth, back and forth. But people are making the mistakes of not understanding the science itself and what the Quran is saying. When you marry them together, understand the science properly and understand the Quran what it takes is properly, you will see there is no discrepancy or, or no incongruency. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, because I've looked into it. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, so, you know, so you, you can more than welcome to bring a doctor no, 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 and, 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 you know, have a discussion well, well, with me, no problem. I'm saying this is the case. So when you look into the Quran, you will find no discrepancy, no inconsistency, no errors, no mistakes, and no contradictions. That's what the Quran makes the claim. If, if, if it's somebody finds that with deep reflection that there's truly a mistake or contradiction, they have the right to say it's not from God, according to Quran's there own the, standard. There is the one about the, you know, where... Uh, it confirms the Injil and the Torah. 
The Quran, the Quran says it's a muhayminan, a quality control, a guardian. It falsifies the falsehood and testifies to truthfulness within the Judeo-Christian scriptures. It even says, Woe to those who write the books with their own hands and they say this is from God. Yeah, but this, they were talking about, there's or maybe probably in Hadith, where um, hmm? Muhammad goes to um, the Jews and they want the Jews, to, they want Muhammad to adjudicate on an issue. Yeah. And he goes, you have the Torah, why don't you, why don't you use that? No? You yeah. The bit I'm talking about? Yeah, so, yeah. And this is obviously in the 7th century. So the Torah in the 7th century was still correct, yeah? It wasn't as good. It doesn't mean Torah is fully um, corrupted? No Muslims so believe. No, no, no. No Muslims believe is fully corrupted and just throw it in the bin. That will be an insult. But why does it say? We are saying that? corruption, as the Quran affirmed, corruption has taken within itself. They've forgotten a good part of the message. Number one, from the Bible, uh, Old Testament or New Testament, if you want to call it, two broader scriptures, they've forgotten. Fanasiya hawa mimma dhukiru bihi. Quran says they forgot a good part of it, good part of the message. That's what they've done. So many things it says they've taken away or forgotten about it. And about things, for example, the Quran says, Isa Islam, Jesus, he came, he says, prophesied, someone will come after him and his name will be Ahmed. Do you find any of that information about Jesus Christ in any of the Gospels that he said that? The Quran says Christ, he actually said that he's prophesying someone will come after me, his name will be Ahmed. Do you find that description no. in any of them? So where is it gone? The Quran says he was present in his teaching. So now you realize Quran is implicitly saying how they have lost that information, that teaching. Okay, it's, quite, it's raining now. Uh, we'll talk another time. Leo, pleasure speaking to you. Um, no offense um, if, 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 you know, if I've offended it anyway. I was only, you know, showing you something about your belief system that we, uh, you know, as Muslims consider to be not correct, not as a form of insult or mockery to you, but just Sorry, to highlight. No, no, I never said that. I never thought that. Good man. Okay, no, you no, take no. care. Yeah, and you okay. All the best. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Bye. Alaikum <laughs> 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 <laughs>